This episode we are looking at trashing, or dumpster diving. Why hackers do it, how hackers do it, and finally how it looks through the lens of popular culture. I have to open this episode with a disclaimer. I'll be discussing the history of trashing and various instructional documents written about it by hackers over the years. However, I am not condoning trespassing or any of the other illegal things I'll be discussing here, and I'm not responsible should you decide to get yourself in trouble with the law. Oh, and some quick definitions. The word telco will be used a few times throughout this video. It is older US freak slash hacker slang for telephone company offices or buildings, and a switchman is a telephone company engineer. Now that we've gotten that all out of the way, Back in my youth, I was almost hit by a car running from a security guard beside a Microsoft Office campus on a rainy Sunday afternoon. My friend and I had grabbed a few boxes of discarded video cards and memory sticks, and I suppose had been seen on CCTV making away with this trash bounty. Companies discard electronics, computers, computer parts, monitors, TVs, you name it, often in working condition or repairable. It is also worth noting that discarded hard drives or entire computers themselves can also contain information that could be of great use to hackers or phone freaks if not wiped or physically broken before being thrown out. In this clip from a 1982 episode of ABC's 2020 show hosted by Geraldo Riviera, infamous California phone freak Susie Thunder is interviewed and asked how she does what she does. This is a list of all the computers on this particular network. At this point, you might be asking yourself how a group of 16 or 17 year old kids with no formal computer training got a hold of the sophisticated codes needed to give them access to the telephone company's computer system. Well, according to the kids themselves, the answer comes from right here. The trash bins located behind the phone company building. That's right, the trash bins. It was here that they found some out-of-date manuals that contained the information they needed. To get an update, they throw away the old one. Just toss it in the bin. So the phone freaks would go through and clean out the bins. In 1983, Susan Thunder even testified before the US Senate about issues relating to computer security, including what she termed garbology or dumpster diving. Before the internet, people who were interested in hacking or freaking struggled to get a hold of computer manuals or technical details of how the phone system worked. These manuals were valuable from the perspective of learning about computers, operating systems, specific programs or phone network systems, but also often contained details like default settings or passwords that could be useful for account compromises. An example of this would be the default password for a highly privileged account for the VMS operating system that was published in the Digital Equipment Corporation's official documentation back in the 80s. Many systems were compromised as a result. If admins were lazy about changing passwords or did not bother to check what accounts were set up as default in the systems, these accounts were an easy way in. Wikipedia calls this, and looking for other confidential documents in the trash, information diving by the way. That's a new term to me, but there you go. If phone freaks wanted to know how the phone company ran internally, then there was no better way to discover secrets than going through discarded documents from phone company offices. This way they could find useful test numbers, the numbers that phone company employees used to route their own calls, wiring schematics, the method by which phone switches were configured, and so on and so forth. If you wanted to compromise a computer before the days of the internet, and it was only accessible through a modem, you needed to know the phone number associated with that modem before you could do anything. Documents like memos, accounting invoices, or project notes retrieved from a dumpster could either give you an idea of other phone numbers associated with the organization, which might give you an idea of phone numbers to try, or the modem number itself might be documented. Similarly, passwords or logins might be written down, or details of employees could be used to inform guesses about both. Bill Landreth, who was a member of 80s hacking group The Inner Circle, wrote a book in 1985 called Out of the Inner Circle, A Hacker's Guide to Computer Security. He describes how a hacker might gain access to a computer. First, the hacker obtains an account. That's the easy part. Sometimes it's as easy as calling and asking for one, posing as a university student, perhaps. More usually, it means getting account names from bulletin boards, company lists, or trash bins. Another potential reason to go trashing is social engineering leverage. The Hackers Encyclopedia, put together by Logic Bomb in the 90s, defines social engineering as conning someone, usually involves using what you know about someone and pushing their buttons in order to manipulate them into doing what you want them to do. Sarah Granger discusses in Social Engineering Fundamentals Part 1, Hacker Tactics, all of the various definitions and concludes, the one thing that everyone seems to agree upon is that social engineering is generally a hacker's clever manipulation of the natural tendency to trust. The hacker's goal is to obtain information that will allow him slash her to gain unauthorized access to a valued system and the information that resides on that system. In the age of the internet, you can research an organization or system you want to hack. If it is connected to the internet, you can perform various reconnaissance. But in the days before all of this was possible, you needed a method to collect information to even know where to begin. 
If you wanted to persuade someone at the phone company to connect a phone call they shouldn't, then knowing their technical lingo, the location of their offices, or the names of some key employees was vitally important. All of this and more was potentially available by lucking out and finding a trash bag full of usable information at the phone company. Now that we have covered the why, I thought we'd get our hands dirty learning about how hackers have advised on how to go about trashing over the years. From a text file entitled Better Homes and Trashing written by the Saint. First, the location. You generally want to pick a place that is somewhat isolated, where there will not be a lot of, preferably none, of people. To accomplish this, it is also best to do your trashing at night, as there will not likely be any employees at the location, and it is easier to hide and not to be seen by passers-by. The Saint then goes on to discuss security considerations. Places such as telco buildings and large companies often have security guards on duty 24 hours, and often keep their dumpsters behind fences so as to discourage trespassing. Yes, you are trespassing when you start looking in someone's garbage can, so it is a good idea to check out the place you're going to trash for a day or so to get a feel for what kind of security they have. Next up is the consideration of shredded documents. In the late 80s and throughout the 90s, organizations became more aware of security hygiene. They began either shredding their own documents or having their documents picked up by an outside service that would take care of shredding and dumping those documents for them. As noted in various hacker text files though, mistakes do happen and documents make their way into the wrong bins at times due to laziness or incompetence. Now that we've gone through the topic of trashing in depth, I thought we'd finish with a look at how it has been portrayed in mainstream media over the years. Starting with the movies Sneakers and Hackers and ending with the TV shows Mr. Robot and Blacklist. Sneakers is the earliest hacking related trash retrieval I could find on film in popular culture. Oh mother! Sorry Liz, standard procedure. Trash from the guy's house. And thank you for bringing it into mine. Here, let's see here. Phone bill, no long distance. Club Med brochure. Ticket stubs to a Barry Manilow concert. Here it is. Here we go. Dear com Computator, welcome to the world of automated compatibility. He's a computer dater. Of course, we aren't getting through a video on the topic without Hackers, the movie, and flare guns for fun and profit. Espionage thriller show Blacklist had an episode in season 1 that featured hacktivists and shredded documents reassembled under the stern gaze of James Spader. Data, it's just not worth the trouble. Not only is it impossible to reassemble, it's second tier intel. Put it together. You're kidding, right? Borokov, I hate sarcasm and I love puzzles. So that's it for the topic of trashing. I'd like to thank everyone who's watched, liked, or subscribed, and also textfiles.com for the invaluable hacker text that went into the making of this video. I'd also like to thank Hack Curio, linked in the video description, for the archival footage of Susan Thunder. Consider following our Twitter over at Real Hack History and subscribe here for updates on future videos. Thanks, everyone.